everyone, my name is Megan, and I am half of Galpash, and you might be wondering why in the hell I'm here. Uh, that's because this weekend, I get to be out of town for work, so I'm recording from a hotel room. And I brought all my shit with me. So I'm just in here with my tea in a paper cup, uh, like a fucking lady. Pinky out. So I kind of wanted to make this video anyway. Um, this is a topic I'm, I'm interested in, and so I figured that you know when I'm out of town, it'd be a perfect time to talk about that since Rachel isn't here. But I want to talk to you guys today about fan fiction. In mainstream culture, um, I would say that fan fiction is pretty pretty frowned upon. Um, even though since there's been literature, there's been fan fiction. Since there have been characters. That have been created by others and others have enjoyed those stories and characters there has been fan fiction so it's just a part of our culture and it's a part of literature so i think that we should just embrace it already and let's talk about it the fan fiction as a whole i i think is a huge untapped fandom subculture that's out there it's kind of one of those things that's out there and it exists and everyone knows that it exists but it's not really something that a lot of people willingly talk about or or advertise don't get me wrong there it's still definitely you know popular but you know watch any t you know kind of tv shows or movies when they talk about fan fiction you know usually the kind of connotation that it is is you know there's this nerd and they're like reading or writing star trek fan fiction and you're you're kind of supposed to look down on it but fan fiction has existed since literature has and stories have existed this isn't new and the fact that it has such a negative connotation, kind of, it's kind of shitty. So much like Rule 34 of the internet, and if you don't know what Rule 34 of the internet is, just Google it. Or don't. Just save yourself the trouble. But if it exists in pulp culture, there's probably a fan fiction about it. Fan fiction is so diverse, and it's so just imaginative and creative and it's this huge huge outlet for people that if it exists there's a fan fiction for it um, for those who are new to fan fiction and don't really know what I'm talking about you know fan fiction isn't just you know I like these characters so I'm going to write about them okay that's kind of basic there is so many different options out there if you know Things you can't even imagine that may exist, exist in fan fiction. So this is what we called AU, so or alternate universes. And there's so many kinds of AUs that are out there. Oh my god, some of the things that I see out there, it's amazing. There's also smut, so you know, don't think that 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 totally exists too. But some examples of alternate universes for fan fiction, there's the coffee shop. College dorms. There's the soulmate AU, so the whole idea of them traveling through time in different parallel universes, and they always seem to find each other because they're soulmates. I love that one. That's one of my favorites. Um, the actor AU. So if it's a ship or a story where the the, the actors themselves have a lot of chemistry, it's usually a popular AU to have you know them the actors who are um, acting those characters, but have their own story. It's hard to explain, but it's still quite interesting. I don't know how I feel about it because the actors are just portraying the character, but eh, to each his own. Um, there's also reversed roles. So you have different characters put in other characters' positions. So they're like flip-flopped. So to see kind of where that dynamic goes. Um, there's crossovers with other shows. And this is pretty cool because you take different shows and you kind of blend them together and you know for as much crap as you know fan fiction gets it's really fucking creative and the stuff that people think of and the way that they can manipulate you know character diversity and complexity it's incredible like it's truly incredible and and the reason why fan fiction is so important too is that you know it it allows fans and fandoms to, you know, kind of embrace and feel empowered because they can take the characters and the stories that they've loved, especially if the show's ended and it, it's like Firefly. That show deserved so much more, but because of circumstances, there's no more Firefly. So 
that is the perfect opportunity for fan fiction writers to go in and kind of just roll with it. So, you know, it it gives the fandom power to continue on with the stories that may have ended and also with characters that may have ended. So it's really empowering and it's such, it, it's, it's like the shows and the characters have just, they've not ended and they, they continue to go on. Even shows that have been over for a while now still have fan fiction written, written about them because the fans still love it and they still connect with it and so they're still you know, pouring themselves into these stories and they're creating something beautiful out of it. If you are interested in going out and reading some fan fiction, and believe me, any interest that you might have, any show, and if it exists, there's a fan fiction on it, and you can find it. And no, no doubt, there's shit tons of it with all the characters you could possibly think of. So if you were to go to fanfiction.net or archive of your own, Yes, I think I pronounced that right. Ao. Um, if you go to either of those websites and you search any of your, sh you know, the shows that you want to watch, there's going to be so much that's available to you. So I highly encourage it. Just go out and see what's out there. You know, so many writers have, you know, poured themselves out into these stories, and they're just out there, ready to be consumed. So just have at it. And for the writers specifically, I kind of want to sit down with you guys. Just, you know, quick one on one. Um, for those who don't know, uh, I am a writer, which I mean that I'm writing a book and I haven't been published yet, and it's so hard. But I am a writer, and that includes being a fan fiction writer. Yes, I know. A lot of people will tell you that fan fiction isn't real to write or that you aren't considered a real writer if you write fan fiction and to that I call bullshit because anything you write if you're writing you're a writer so if you have any interest at all in in pursuing a writing career fan fiction is a completely legitimate and good route to start off as and I see this as someone who has when I was in middle school I started watching Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z. And I was obsessed with that shit. I started writing fan fiction for Sailor Moon. And it was weird. It was like a weird merge between Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, where it was like Sailor Moon characters, but like Dragon Ball Z like powers and shit. And it was terrible. It was so bad. And I'm talking like circa 1999, year 2000, like turn of the century kind of time frame. So I wrote all of my fan fiction down. I wrote it down on paper. And it was so, so bad. I got to the point where, for some reason, one of my characters, like, exploded and, like, evaporated into, like, a pile of ash. And I had that pile of ash scream. Why a pile of ash would scream, just an object would scream like that, I don't know. I was 13. I didn't know any better, and I was terrible. But the point I'm trying to make is that regardless of what you're writing, whether it's fan fiction, whether it's, you know, a novel, anything like that, when you first start out writing, you're going to suck. It's going to be terrible. Your sentence structure isn't going to go right. Your characters aren't going to cooperate. It's just going to be difficult and it's going to suck. And I don't say that to be discouraging. I say that to be realistic. And what I'm saying is that if you want to get into writing, fan fiction is such a great avenue to go because there are resources out there where you can publish your work and you can get feedback from people. Don't get me wrong, there are still trolls and there are still assholes out there, but it's the readers. So, you know, go out there and read a shit ton of stuff, whether it's fan fiction, books, whatever. Read and consume literature and then write. Because if you read and you write and you keep that consistent and you keep working at it and you keep working at it, you know, the shit, I don't look back at the stuff that I wrote when I was in middle school and like a freshman in high school because it was terrible. Even when I was a senior in high school, the book that I started when I was a senior was terrible. It was so bad. So bad. But I've worked on it and I've really, really practiced, you know, any kind of, whenever you're in any kind of creative field, 
your early work will be terrible, but you need that in order to get better. And you need that to, you know, develop as an artist and to learn and to progress and get that experience. So go out there and write some fan fiction. And, you know, you may not feel comfortable posting it, but at least write it and have it out there and, and have that practice and have that experience. If you only feel comfortable giving it to like your closest friends to read, and you don't really feel comfortable putting it on a website for the whole world to see, then that's completely fine. That It's for you, it's not for anybody else. Writing is a personal thing. Um, and also, if, if you're gonna write smut, kids, make sure, <laughs> make sure you're putting it in a place where your parents aren't going to find it. I'm not saying I have personal experience with this, because I don't, but I can just imagine the awkward conversations you may have with people. Even as an adult, writing smut, I personally don't because I'm way too shy. Like I'll, even with fan fiction that I read, um, I, I'll get to like a sex scene and I will look away to give the characters privacy because I'm stupid. Um, but no, like by having that practice, you're gonna develop as a writer. Um, some amazing examples of people who are fan fiction authors as well as published authors are um, K.L. Hughes, also known as Chromed Poet. Um, she's done a lot of um, Swan Queen fan fiction and The Hundred fan fiction. The Hundred one is my favorite. She's amazing. She's incredible. She published um, Popcorn Love and it's she's amazing. And she does actual books and she does fan fiction. Some of her fan fiction become her books. but. They're not mutually exclusive. If you're a writer, you're a writer. Uh, another example is um, Andy Marquette. And I hope, I really hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Captain Mayhem, because I'm sorry. But she has also published books and she writes fan fiction and she is incredible. Both of those authors are incredible. So, you know, you can write fan fiction and still be an author and it's all legitimate. It's all literature. So I hope that as you know, especially with, with these websites, fanfiction.net, and, you know, fandoms growing. Um, I, I hope that fanfiction becomes more and more acceptable. And, you know, people feel less embarrassed about reading fanfiction on their phone or, or you know, about writing it and having their friends read it. Um, it's, it's, you know, baby steps. Baby steps. So go ahead and, and embrace, embrace your fanfiction. Love it. Cherish it. Because sometimes fanfiction writers are better than the writers of the actual show or whatever kind of fandom you're from. 100. Anyway, I hope you go out, read some amazing literature, grow, write, develop as a person, and just enjoy your shit. That's the moral of this video. Go enjoy your shit. Peace out. See you guys later.